This is the poorly thought through guide to rugby, the other world game. I'm Sam Eichen. The big news out of New Zealand is all about Dan Carter. Here, have a look. It's a tragic situation for a, a highly talented young sportsman. In Dan Carter country, they're hurting. It's just been devastating news. Just absolutely gutted. I just couldn't believe it. Just dumbfounded. Couldn't get over it. But shattered, really. There's just, there's just no reason. Now, just to avoid any confusion, I just have to point out that he's not dead. It's something far worse. He can't play rugby for the rest of the World Cup. The man with the most talked about groin in New Zealand has spoken about the end of his World Cup dream. He's out with a groin strain. That's the medical term for a dicky groin. I hear it's a very painful injury. It was clear then, from that moment, the injury was serious. I knew it was... Uh... It was going to be pretty serious just because of the, uh, the pain. Even Dan Carter is taking the news about Dan Carter better than most Kiwis. And he's the one who's been kicked out of the team hotel. You know, lose my accreditation and things like that. It's just part of the rules when you, you bring a new player in. So, you know, that's tough. The Kiwi media, however, have looked beyond the World Cup at how Dan Carter's groin is going to affect the next election. And nearly a third of New Zealanders think the outcome of the Rugby World Cup is more important than the outcome of the election. When the nation is in mourning over a rugby player's groin injury, you know, politics is going to have to take a back seat. But hang on, Kiwis, cheer up. There might be some good to come out of this. If the All Blacks don't win, this is a great excuse. You can still claim to be the best in the world. So come on, kids, let's hear it for Dan Carter. Dan Carter! Now, the most ballsy move in this World Cup was made off the field. It was from this guy from Samoa, whose name is, um, this. Eliotta Fuima Ono Sapolo. The man who called the ref a racist and told the IRB to kiss his bum. Yeah, that's it, sticking it to the man. But Peter de Villiers, the coach of South Africa, says the Samoans were just thugs. I've posted a link on Facebook page, you can see exactly what he said. I think he's talking about stuff like this. He says things like that bring the game into disrepute. Unlike eye gouging. Skulk Berger was accused of that in 2009. Rugby is a contact sport and so is dancing. So guys who can't take it, make the decision. We couldn't agree with Pistol Pete more there. Everything he says makes so much sense. Now the Rugby World Cup finals have set the Northern Hemisphere against the Southern Hemisphere. It's been simmering away for years and it's about to go nuclear. It's going to go all sharks versus jets, just like in West Side Story. Only, only there's no music and the fight scenes don't include jazz ballet moves. At the moment, it looks like the Southern Hemisphere is way out in front, leading five to one. But head ref Paddy O'Brien says that through the new interpretations of the laws, it's completely different to the way it looks, even in the slow motion replay. It's actually neck and neck, so we stand corrected. This World Cup will sort it out once and for all, and may the best hemisphere win, the way God intended, on tries and not kicks. How to catch up on amusing stuff in between episodes, go to the website or follow us on Twitter or Facebook. I'm Sam Eichen, but in a way, aren't we all?